Hi, my name is Monique Joe. Ever since I was little, I've loved drawing and making art. Because I have family that do traditional Chinese painting, such as my dad, my family has always supported my hobby, and I'm very grateful for that. Although I'm born in Vancouver and have been raised here for most of my life, when I was 43 days old, I was brought to Guangzhou, China, and lived there for three years. We also go there once every year for about one to two months. I believe that going there often has really strengthened my identity, so much that instead of saying going to Guangzhou, I now say going back to Guangzhou, because I feel that that place is my true home. After the pandemic began, I realized how strongly attached I am to my hometown. Whenever I saw photos or videos, I would get nostalgia, which feels sweet, but also painful. Not being able to go and connect with my family there, nor can I connect as deeply with my culture, I felt that something was missing from within me. So I want to express that part of me by making art. This leads to my inquiry question. How can I create visual art with the use of memories to express my self-identity? First, I needed photos. I couldn't explore my hometown taking pictures, so I searched through my old photos, found nothing eye-catching, searched through Google, searched through physical photo albums, also found nothing there, and asked my dad and grandpa to send me some photos since they were living in China right now. Through this image-finding process, in addition, I researched my hometown's history and our village's history. I connected with my grandparents a lot too. They told me about old stories, and I learned that in our village, under the last name Zhou, I'm in the 30th generation. As for the photos, I used one from Google, one from my grandpa, and found a YouTube channel that did live streams walking around in my hometown Guangzhou. Perfect! I screenshotted parts of one of the videos that was particularly aesthetic. For art supplies, I had to stock up on white paint, and I used acrylic paint, paintbrushes, and paper that I already had. Now let's see my painting process. Here are some of the photos I used. I used some of them for references and just for inspiration. Originally, I had planned to make several separate pieces using one photo for each, but then I realized that this method did not create the effect that I wanted. So here I was doodling many other ideas. The effect that I'm looking for is a semi-abstract visual representation of my mind's memories of Guangzhou. Sometimes I have dreams when I sleep of being in Guangzhou. This painting is a snapshot of those collected fragments of memories in a sort of dreamy way. So instead of separate pieces, I decided to put all of them into one collage. And here's a quick sketch. Then I have everything sketched out on the big piece of paper where I'm actually gonna paint. To be honest, at first, I was gonna use pastel for the whole thing, but then I realized it's not gonna work because I can't get to the small detailed areas, so paint was going to have to do the job. I started painting finally. It's usually better to paint with the light colors first, then do the dark colors. Fun fact, I used only two brushes for the entire painting, and they were about the same size. The first one, I was too lazy to wash it and it dried out. And it was kind of hard to get thin areas like this, for example. But it was kind of like abstract feeling, so I just went with it. I heard that you shouldn't use pastel with paint, but for me, they blended perfectly fine. Here I'm trying to make it a bit lighter because there is a highlight. I already painted the fruits, but they turned out really ugly, so I just painted over it with black. Then I redid all of the fruits on top of it. I noticed there's actually quite a lot of yellow in my painting, but there's different types of yellows like greener yellows and warmer yellows, brighter yellows, darker yellows. 
Along the way, some of the colors were really hard to mix, so I just made it up. Usually the reference pictures had really nice colors, so I copied those mostly, but sometimes I just went with whatever I felt like. This greener building with black windows in the back is actually one of those historic buildings in the early 1900s of Guangzhou. Well, I don't know exactly for this particular building, but I know its architecture is. Here I'm mixing one color for a tiny, tiny spot. As you can see here and in the next clip, or even throughout the video, I'm going over places that are patchy, and you, you can see I went over the lines. But that's because that's the background, and you usually should do the background first, so that you can cover it up on the top for the actual objects. Unless you didn't do a good job, then you can go back and work on the background again. Something I should have done differently was don't go as fast because in this one corner, I went especially fast and I made a lot of white spaces. It might be hard to tell from far away, but up close you can see little white dots because I was trying to make this abstract looking reflection in the floor because of rain. So if I do this again, I would definitely go slower and more in detail. One of the hardest things in this project, well, during painting especially, was my back. As you can see, I'm working on the floor and there's no chair. I'm just crouching and squatting. So it really hurt. I'm done. I'm done. So after 15 hours of research and 17 hours of painting on the floor with my painful back, but I was fine afterwards because I stretched. I'm finally done. So yeah, the biggest challenge, the most, most, most biggest challenge was definitely time management. I procrastinated a lot. And, but when I started, when I actually started, because starting was the hardest part, starting, I realized it's just my passion. This is fun. Like, why am I stressing? This is what I'm what I'm used to doing. So I was excited and looking forward to the end result when I got the hang of it, when I knew exactly what I was going to do. So let's see the end result. So some elements you can look for are a bridge in the city, a neighborhood area, rain, obviously. This tree is a starfruit tree that grew in our old house in the village, which is the one that my grandpa took a picture of. In the middle, we have flowers that are called Magnolia Figo. They grew in front of our old house in the village. So this is the whole thing. Thank you for watching. Bye.